This video is brought to you by Guardio. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Also, it's not keeps, so no one gets to clown on Asmongold if he does ever watch this. Here's the intro hook. Business Casual, owned by a man named Alex Edson, whom I've covered before, has filed three deliberate strikes for just a few seconds of content based on public domain images against a channel named Magnates Media. Those strikes have initiated a countdown, at the end of which his entire livelihood and a very successful channel he has devoted the past five years of his life to will be deleted full scale. I consider this to be the fraudulent attempted assassination of a competitor's career, and eight months ago, I tried to warn people. All right, the title is kind of extreme, I get that, but I'm pretty sure it's justified, so please hear me out. Let me know at the end if I'm right about that. Here's the situation. A while ago, I covered a lawsuit against YouTube as a platform by a channel named Business Casual. Not just any lawsuit, this lawsuit was being pursued by a man named Alex Edson, who recently bought the YouTube channel. He was not the original creator or the person behind the videos and had now decided that a few seconds of his footage served as justification for taking down the entire Russia Today YouTube network. Alex Edson, in a rather long, high production value video, which, contrary to what he says, was not being suppressed at all, and many of you have likely already seen, went on the attack and asserted that YouTube was undermining America and helping the Kremlin, because a channel had used a few seconds of their copyrighted parallax animations. This is the part where I tell everyone to go watch a bunch of additional videos for context. I know that's annoying, so I'll try to summarize in a very, very fast way. There are three videos that I made down below to back up every single one of these claims, piece by piece, as well as a link to the original Business Casual lawsuit video, but here's the gist of it for people that don't want to sink the time into doing that. Alex Edson bought the Business Casual channel some time ago. Most of the original content there was not made by him. Once he owned it, he discovered that RT, Russia Today, more specifically RT Arabic, owned by TV Novosti, had used a few clips from his videos and decided to do something about it. He got very, very angry. Fine by me, whatever, who cares? His chosen attack vector was to say that they had infringed his copyright egregiously and deliberately. He filed strikes, conversed with RT Arabic in emails, got them to admit that they had used his content, and then went for the throat. One problem, he actually put himself on record in an affidavit undermining the entire premise of his own lawsuit because there have been network level strike parameters set up by YouTube since 2019. More details in my old videos, his lawsuit was an absolute joke. Setting that aside because it doesn't affect me nor do I care what happens between a copyright troll and a Russian state-sponsored media outlet, that's the least of my priorities, we now have to look at his other lawsuit and general claims. Alex Edson wasn't just suing RT, Russia Today, trying to get every single channel of this global organization banned outright because they used a few clips that were a few seconds long. He was also suing YouTube itself. Why? Well, because he thinks that YouTube is deliberately profiting off of copyright infringement. And you know what? Maybe. I don't know. There definitely are a lot of bootlegged movies and shows, but then again, those get shut down over time because operating a platform at scale is an imperfect thing. Still, YouTube can be criticized for that, no question, absolutely, so what's the real problem? The real problem is that in his own lawsuit, Business Casual's legal team argued something very specific, which is critical to understand. For context, I went through all of their shit, but one very particular segment stood out to me, and I have to read it fully here for everyone to listen to. From the court, quote, let me ask you another question, Mr. Duff. The way that you describe it, it seems that it's just as easy to game the system from the front side as from the back side. What I mean by that is, it sounds like it's just as easy for a bad guy, let's say in this case, the defendant, to affirmatively or preemptively file a notification of infringement against you and then file two more within 90 days to give you three strikes. So what's to stop a bad guy from doing that if all that has to happen is that you just file a notice of infringement? In response, Mr. Duff, part of Business Casual's legal representation, said, quote, Your Honor, that is an excellent question. You are right. Bad actors are always going to try and find a way to game the system. The problem here is that the adjudication requirement is not only included in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. If you read the other provisions of the DMCA Safe Harbor, Section 512, it's clear that Congress did not want parties to have to sue to enforce their rights. So while it may be that the system could be gamed on the other side, that's how Congress intended it to be, end quote. That right there is business casual, arguing that simply because he filed some strikes, it therefore means that YouTube needs to terminate the entire channel without him proving anything in a court of law. That's what we just read, and that appears to be precisely what he's doing now to a channel named Magnates Media. YouTube sponsorships are all about being relatable. All of you every day are being absolutely bombarded by advertising and sponsors and offers and links, which means one of two things. Either you click some of them, which can actually put you 
dramatically at risk or you tune out, making YouTube sponsorships basically useless because you just don't care. I want to change that, at least for this channel. Today's sponsor is Guardio, which is primarily a Chrome browser extension that offers threat tracking and online protection. I've used their research before in videos, I have the service myself, and as far as I can tell, there's actually at least one verifiable instance where Guardio blocked a malicious download and prevented an infection on one of my devices. Guardio also showed me an instance where my own data was breached, which makes this two separate instances that I can directly point to where the subscription more than paid for itself. And just to be thorough, online threats are always evolving. There is no singular method of staying safe all the time, but Guardio is an extremely valuable tool to me and one that I'm very happy to recommend. If you click the link down below right now, you can have a free scan as well as a seven day trial of the service. After that, it's $10 per month, but the upper echelon community will receive 20% off. Again, link down below and a big thank you to Guardio for sponsoring the channel, as well as being one of the brands that supports my editorial freedom. I appreciate that a tremendous amount. It makes it possible for me to pursue further projects. If you're someone who uses Chrome, a lot of the same passwords and also allows login credentials and payment methods to be saved in the form of cookies, Guardio is very worth it. You need all the help you can get. Okay, this is the juicy part. Magnates Media, who makes very good content, by the way, I've actually watched quite a bit of it and I'm subscribed to them now, of course, has produced over 250 videos in the past couple of years. Of those 250, a very small number are similar in topic to those of Business Casual by way of the niche that they occupy. Of that small number, the similar topics are effectively where the connection stops, with wildly different lengths for every single video. What I mean by this is that the business casual video pertaining to Andrew Carnegie is 16 minutes long, but the video about Andrew Carnegie from Magnates Media is 54 minutes long. Of that 54 minutes, quite literally one second of footage, not a typo or some like hyperbolic exaggeration, no, one second of footage is reportedly similar. It's this photo, actually, and I was also able to obtain a recording of the editor's timeline from Magnates Media showcasing that this was not simply ripped out of a video and added to theirs, it is a deeply customized animation derived from a public image. Let me just outline the entire situation again for absolute clarity. Business Casual filed two separate lawsuits, one against TV Novosti, where they appear to have received a default judgment in the case, which I wholeheartedly disagree with here for a variety of reasons, but whatever, I'm not gonna go to bat for Russia today. They can defend themselves or not. Apparently they can't even get an adequate lawyer as a result of international sanctions and pressure. The other lawsuit, however, was against YouTube, which was unceremoniously thrown in the trash, where they argued that they should not have to prove anything in a court of law. YouTube should merely terminate channels accused immediately. Now, after those events have died down, business casual Alex Edson files a strike against a similar YouTube channel to his own, covering business, finance, and entrepreneurial topics, but he doesn't stop there. Rapid fire, he files two more strikes, each one for less than four or five seconds tops. That's three, three strikes. That's the threshold for termination of a personal YouTube channel, like permanent deletion forever. And Alex Edson, after his lawyer argued that they shouldn't even need to prove their case before YouTube punishes the accused, has now set this channel up for termination because of a few seconds where the footage shown is highly customized. Here's where we need a bit more clarity because Alex Edson is unhinged. In his original one hour, 47 minute anti-YouTube video about how YouTube and Google are trying to undermine America in support of the Kremlin because a media outlet used his shitty little intro to film 101 parallax animations. Oh, God forbid. Alex Edson makes a very specific claim. After ripping our video from our channel, RT then used a digital eraser to scrape off our watermark, which they replaced with their own watermark. But they didn't stop there. That is categorically untrue. It did not happen. The watermark he's talking about is an inserted clickable button at a platform level done by YouTube. It's a way to subscribe. If you download the video through any other format ever, any at all, there is no watermark because it isn't a watermark. Alex Edson has egregiously misrepresented reality here, and that needs to be stated plainly. Hopefully people can start to get a complete idea of what's happening, or at least a more complete idea, but I'll spell it out. Because of a collective six seconds, three in the first strike, one in the second strike, and two in the third, Magnates Media is about to have his entire channel terminated. Let me show you one of the precise images that we're talking about here. I want there to be no dispute on this. Alex, you're not weaseling your way out of this. I swear to you, you're not. Also, this is the image that was specifically cited by Alex Edson himself in private communication with Magnates Media, where he said, quote, your videos constituted wholesale copying of my copyrighted content. You did not transform my content in any way whatsoever. You also took my copyrighted script, put it into ChatGPT or some other generative AI software, and made slight tweaks. 
even more, upon a brief and casual viewing of your infringing video, my copyrighted material was instantly recognizable. You did not transform my video in any meaningful way whatsoever. Your video is also about the same topic as my video, i.e. it serves the same purpose with the same target audience. There is no genuine dispute about this. And lastly, your actions will not be viewed favorably in federal court. If you desire to avoid the same fate as RT, Russia Today, I suggest that you immediately apologize for your egregious and unlawful behavior. Using generative AI tools such as ChatGPT, Dolly, slash Midjourney to tweak my copyrighted content is not transformation." End quote. The level of posturing here with, with a fundamental misunderstanding of everything to do with generative AI because he obviously doesn't know what he's talking about, but whatever, is incredible. But setting all that aside, let's look at the facts. Alex sent this image, which pertains to this section of a video he owns. I'm putting them one after the other, then side by side, and I want people to pay attention to all the differences. For starters, the parallax animation itself is entirely different. It's anchored differently, it's cut differently. Just look at how the entire industrial foreground zooms forward as a single image in one, but spreads as a three-layer parallax in the other. These are different fundamental animations. Magnates Media has provided evidence of precisely how his editor makes these images as well, also the timeline that his editor was working with, the smoke from the towers, the particle effects, the bombs, the transition, everything is different aside from the original static source image alone, which is effectively a requirement due to the historical significance in Andrew Carnegie's story of that particular mill or factory. Business casual, and I don't say this lightly, has previously tried to argue in a court of law that there should be no burden of proof before channels are permanently deleted by way of copyright strikes. He then files three, that's a very particular number to file rapid succession in one night. He then files three copyright strikes, threatening the deletion of a similar channel with nearly a million subscribers. He corresponds with the owner only once, just one single time. And in that email, he uses evidence that actually debunks his entire case. The animations are not the same for the Andrew Carnegie video. There is no legal grounds to strike that piece of content. And yet Alex Edson is demanding an apology. Why? And this is part of my own speculation here, because I believe that his ability to force an apology is what led to his victory against RT, where he was awarded $75,000. Acknowledging that you stole someone's copyright openly can have a serious impact on whatever case they bring against you. And so now he has filed three strikes, dialed up the urgency, created this sense of panic, demanded an apology for egregious, unlawful actions. But the example he sent in his email is wrong. Magnate's media should not apologize ever. He should fight this, and he will fight this, and all of us should help him fight this, because the way it seems to me, business casual Alex Edson is trying to vindictively destroy a competing channel. He's basically trying to assassinate a YouTube channel with three strikes, while holding the deletion of their entire account over their head by using false examples. This is the point where I have to ask you, the viewers, a really big favor. In particular, the mutual followers that I share with Asmongold. Hey, I hope I've earned the right to ask you this, and I, I do apologize if not, and this is out of line, but will all of you please respectfully get this on Asmongold's radar, or any other creators you frequently watch, especially ones that are larger in size, maybe even the ones who defended Edson to begin with, with his whole, uh, Russia and YouTube's trying to undermine America and league with the Kremlin. I greatly appreciate Asmund's perspective, in particular on fair use. He has incredible reach, and even though my first trio of videos about Alex Edson harming the YouTube ecosystem did kind of well from a channel perspective, here he is again, Alex Edson, doing it worse than ever, and we need a lot of big guns to come out and kind of stop this from happening. A lot of major creators came out in support of his anti-Russia stance and pro-copyright and stuff, but guys, I've looked at all the legal filings. The current picture seems to indicate that he's deliberately trying to assassinate channels on the platform for profit. We cannot let that stand. What's even worse, anyone who ever comments about this, or my previous videos, or mentions my channel name, or Magnates Media, or anything like that, or disagrees with Alex Edson in any way whatsoever, gets fully deleted from his channel comments. He moderates that thing like a hawk. Every time you say anything that isn't perfectly in support of him, he'll get rid of you, he'll purge everything, because he's trying to cover up the fact that there's other information out there, and the shady stuff that he's doing does not look good. Not just the mean ones, or the ones with profanity either, the comments. Anything that mentions the the shady dealings that he does, or the, the ways he's attacking people, or the tactics that he's using, they're all just gone, and it goes even further. Prior to all of this, Alex Edson allegedly owned a multi-channel network called Power TV. 
course, I have all the evidence and the videos linked down below, but whatever. I'm using all the technical legal terminology, right? Allegedly, in my opinion, blah, blah, blah. Where prior reporting done by me uncovered instances where he would perpetrate what I would define on a personal level as highly abusive business practices against small creators. There are videos addressing this by individuals. You can look them up. There is a highly detailed Reddit thread summary. And of course, my videos from before that are linked down below. Yes, yes, go watch those. But the gist of it is that Alex Edson appears to be seeking out instances where similar content is used by YouTubers compared to the material he purchased, not made on the Business Casual channel, filing three rapid fire strikes, even ones that are falsified, to get those channels deleted, then demanding an apology, which again, might have strings attached. After the apology evidenced by his track record with TV Novosti and RT, he will leverage it into a copyright lawsuit to demand as much money as possible from whoever he's targeting. And he's doing it right now, worse than ever, after arguing that there should be no burden of lawful adjudication, and YouTube should simply purge anyone that he files claims against. I'm beating the proverbial war drums right now. This cannot be allowed to happen. Six collective seconds of similar content cannot be weaponized into the deletion of an entire popular channel, unless they, uh, unless they apologize, when the accuser has a track record of then weaponizing the apology to inflict as much damage as possible. YouTubers, all of you, please protect yourselves from creators like this. Rally, get the word out, make sure everyone understands their own individual rights, and do not let a corrosive and, in my opinion, evil presence in the space. It's hilarious because he said, don't be evil a whole bunch of times. Dude, you're the evil one. What are you doing? You, we can't let him destroy the channels around him with impunity. Now, in the interest of being as thorough as possible, because that is, of course, required when you're talking about legality and litigation, etc., Alex Edson is unhinged. He claims that Magnates Media used generative AI to copy him, but I received access to the script for the main video in question, the one cited by Alex Edson in the only correspondence he ever sent to Magnates Media, and plugged every single paragraph into three separate leading AI detection tools. No meaningful hits at all. While imperfect, these tools can serve as a baseline. I know how to fool them myself, mostly, but to have 28 pages with no serious hits on three of the leading tools, one after the other, highly unlikely. But even better, because I'm not going to expect everyone to just take my word for anything. I have reviewed the version history of the script itself, seen the timestamps, seen the edits, and the changes. It is my steadfast, resolute, and unshakable opinion that this script is not a generative AI derivative in any capacity of Business Casual's prior content. We're talking about the very fabric of fair use right now. Simply taking a similar topic with a similar image and animating it separately in an entirely unique way cannot be the justification for a channel to be deleted. Damn near blackmailed, in my opinion, by Alex Edson, based on the track record that I see, and it's my hope that the YouTube ecosystem can rally together, it doesn't always need to do this, but it seems like this is one of those times, and rebuke this colossal abuse of the copyright system. I'm not always on the cutting edge of this. I know this kind of stuff happens, similar stuff happens quite often. I'm not always making a video about that particular case, but this one right here, I don't know. I'm kind of personally invested here because I talked about him before and he just went on to do something even worse. It's like, oh man, he's so deceptive. I'll be tracking this throughout the entire process because this matters. Alex Edson is, in my opinion, dangerous to the YouTube ecosystem and dangerous to the fragile sense of balance we all enjoy with regards to copyright, fair use, and income security, and the content that we produce as creators for all of our audiences to watch. This guy is a threat to all of it. It is my view that he is maliciously weaponizing false claims to threaten the destruction of a competing channel just because they're competing and he wants free money in order to force an apology, then use that apology to do precisely what he did to TV Novosti. Alex Edson is a malignant force, a parasitic infection of the YouTube community, and I have absolutely no respect whatsoever for him, his business, or his actions, and we really need to do something about this. YouTube, and this is a direct call to YouTube, and I'll be trying to reach out through whatever channels I can because something needs to be done. YouTube needs to suspend Edson's ability to strike content, remove his ability to even do this, kick him out of the program. This is a clear danger to the community due to improper usage, Improper usage that I have now proven in this video. I mean, it's very obvious when you dig in, but I can do even more. <laughs> Let me know if you want another video. Cut his option fully to strike fellow creators. Eliminate his, his option to do that until we can get a better handle on how bad his actions have gotten over time and protect the rest of the community from a completely unhinged asshole. Please.
that's it. If you want to support the channel, all the links are down below. Also, if this blows up and he officially goes after Magnates Media, or me for that matter, trying to get my channel deleted for his own personal gain, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm not backing down. Alex, if you watch it, you will watch this. Of course you will. I will not back down. This will go to the bitter end. What you are doing is wrong and people need to shut you down for it. Brace yourself, man, because I'm ready. Are you ready? Thanks for watching. Please help spread the word. I don't ask this often. I really don't. Please do get larger creators to look at this, form their own opinions, however they want, because public pressure might be the only immediate and cost-effective remedy without someone basically taking him to court and, and going balls to the wall. If it has to be me, it'll be me. If I, I don't know. We'll see. But please do spread this around. Have a nice night, everyone.